for that glowing introduction and welcome. I have a lot to live up to in our short 20 minutes. But I'd like to thank Tracy and the NBC10 team for bringing us here and allowing us to give you the information. Um, today's market is about power. It's about knowledge. And tonight I want to spend some time to educate you. When you go home and you're in front of your computer, you'll know what to do with your resume to get results. So we're going to go through a few steps that we use to help this particular job seeker that was just featured on Tracy's show. And I'll tell you what we did for her and what you can do to help yourself. <coughs> so without further ado, expectations. We're going to start off by teaching you how do you format your resume to get those results for the jobs you're submitting to. I have three steps. They're fairly easy. It's going to seem like a little work, but like all good jobs, a little work can elbow grease and you're going to get the job done. So you have to be willing to invest time. It's your job search. It's the next step in your career. So spend those extra five to ten minutes that I'm going to recommend you do and invest that time in yourself for every single job that you submit your resume to. It will pay off. And it's done for so many people through NBC10. We're going to talk about how to analyze a job description, how to size up your resume to the job, how to tailor your resume, and finally, we're going to give you some live examples, including the resume of the lucky job seeker that found employment just a few weeks ago. What is a resume result? Most people equate a resume result to getting a job, and that, in fact, is not true. A true resume result is actually landing an interview or getting a phone call. That's the first important thing that, as a job seeker, you need to realize. You're not trying to find a job by sending your resume. You're trying to get an interview or get an exploratory phone call. Fair to say? Everyone can agree? Great. Keep that in mind as you're applying to each of these positions. It's about the interview. I like to think of a resume as a highlight reel of your specific career. It's an opportunity for you to show off every good thing that you've done in your job description, in your career history. It's important to realize there's competitors in your industry. There's a lot of people that have done similar positions. How are you going to stand out? And that would be your resume and what I like to call the highlight reel. It's important to realize, even if we're all sales managers or all directors of human resources, each of our resumes would be unique because we're each, as individuals, unique. That needs to come through on the resume. And realize that this is your opportunity for your very first first impression. Because there's a few first impressions. When you send your resume, when you pick up the phone and follow up, as well as when you get to your first interview, even your second interview, they're all first impressions. So you really need to make it count. There's no, ooh, maybe I should edit my resume after you send it. Because you get really excited when you find a job, right? You're just ready to hit send. So we're going to take a couple steps back. We're going to tell you what to do instead of hitting apply or hitting send. So let's understand what they are looking for. When I define they, that could be the owner of a business, human resources, hiring manager, or even a former coworker that's aware of a job. What do they need to know? Well, they're aware that there's an opening, and they're looking for the one, the one person that's going to fill their job. That's going to be based on a few different factors. Skills, experience, salary, and location. Bottom line, that's what employers are looking for. Depending on the job, depending on the company, every individual is going to have different criteria and a different order of importance. Even though you're applying for the exact same job in a different company, it's a different department. Different experience, different criteria. So keep that in mind. There's no such thing as a magic bullet when you're sending your resume. Okay? No magic bullet. I'm sorry. <laughs> Wish I could give you one. Um, and you have to keep in mind it's not just the resume. It's not just your skills. It's about you as an individual. What you have to offer. Attitude. Ideas. How you work with others. Are you a leader? Are you an individual contributor? That is all factored in to those skill sets. And you'll always see them needs to have good communication, written skills, etc. They are looking for that. That's part of the description. That's difficult to get across 
when you are putting together a resume. That is appropriate for a cover letter, for an email, to talk about those soft skills you have to offer. And your resume is the supporting document that's the highlight reel of your experience that's going to fit into the skills and experience that you have. So keeping in mind what the employer is looking for, 